I love hamstring. Um, I honestly, honestly do. Every time we find a new topic in class, I'm kind of like, oh my god, I love this topic. And my students are kind of like, oh god, me, she's so bad for everything. And I'm kind of like, yeah, I do. It's almost as if my dream job is being a chemistry teacher. And it is, because I get to uh, talk about the different bits of chemistry that I love all the time. And I get to study such a wide range of different bits of chemistry. So, this is why I love chemistry. And a teeny tiny little thing. Teeny, teeny, tiny little thing. Electrons. I love electrons. They are so, so interesting. Um, I just, yeah, that's why I love chemistry. Electrons. So, here are the reasons I love chemistry. The electrons. Here are the reasons I love electrons. And hopefully, um, me telling you why I love chemistry. And I'm sure I can get as many other people to do this as well. I will convince you that chemistry is the best subject in the world. So, five reasons why I love electrons. Number one, and th these are in no particular order. I haven't ranked for this reason, for this reason. These are just five different reasons why electrons are really, really quite awesome. So, number one, when we think about the structure of that atom, we have this teeny tiny nucleus in the middle, and then we get you to draw these shells all around it. And we, we don't get you to draw it to scale. I get you to draw it nice and neatly in your book so we can fit like six on a page because otherwise we would be taking up loads and loads of paper. But that's not to scale because the nucleus is teeny tiny tiny and then the electrons take up all the actual amount of space. Now there's this is tip tip plenty around on the internet but if we took out all of the empty space, so the space between the nucleus and the electrons, which are way, way over here, if we took out all of that empty space, you, me, we would be the size of a grain of salt. Tiny. Because there's so much empty space and stuff. So I'm mainly made of empty space. This chair is mainly made of empty space. The floor that the chair is sitting on is mainly made of empty space. And it's absolutely, I just, it's so hard to get your head around how, if I made of empty space, and the chair is made of empty space, how how am I not falling through the chair as I sit on it? I, it's, it's just, oh, it's just mind-blowing. And that's what's so fantastic about chemistry, that the more you think about things, the, 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 more, you, the more you get a headache, really. Because... Some things are simple, some things are easy to understand, and, and we only tell you the basics at GCSE. We tell you the nucleus is in the middle, the electrons around the outside. But if you actually think about it, that's really weird that we're all with empty space. And yet we do so many things, you know. We think, we talk, we can make cameras to record things on, you know, the internet to make YouTube videos. But we're made of empty space. This is just like, what? It's like, I, yeah, just, yeah. I, I, I know, a number, number one was, number one was a headache, and I'm afraid the electrons only get worse, because they are weird. They are completely, completely weird, but fantastic. So, um, the second reason why electrons are awesome. You may have seen demos in class, um, where you, you put sodium into water and it goes and you get a nice little um nice little reaction going on um to putting all the different metals in there then we get a get some pretty kind of flames it's going to be whizzing around and all of that reactivity the reactivity of absolutely everything is due to electrons and when we get you to draw the electron shells we're putting a certain number of electrons in certain places and the number of the electrons on the outside will determine how reactive something is so because sodium has one electron on the outside, that means when we put it in water, it's going to react quite violently. And it's all due to where the electrons are actually positioned. And again, they're, they're so tiny. I mean, they weigh basically nothing. Okay, GCSE, we tell you nothing, actually nothing. But in reality, they do have this teeny, teeny, tiny, tiny mass. But these things are so tiny can cause such massive reactions when they take place. And then this kind of leads on to number three, or you might want to call it number two and a half or whatever. They're also responsible for how unreactive things are. 
So things like um, water, which is pretty stable, or the, the nitrogen, the, the gases that we breathe in, if these were more reactive, if they were more like sodium, life on Earth couldn't take place because things would be reacting crazily most of the time. Can you imagine that every time you had a drink of water, then your insides reacted like how sodium reacts with water, then that would be completely ridiculous. So because of how the electrons in, in water, so we have hydrogen, we have oxygen, because of how they are, they are interacting with each other, that's what makes for it so stable so that life on Earth can exist. So, I mean, electrons are one of the, well, the reason we are here, because we wouldn't be here if we didn't have electrons. Okay, number four, moving on to some slightly more complicated stuff now, I'm afraid. Electrons are particles. They are actual things. Except sometimes they can behave like weights. Mm. So they're actual particles, but they can behave like weights. So like the, the waves in infrared radiation that we get coming down from the sun, that's just, just waves. But they're not that big. So particles can be particles, electrons can be particles, and they can be waves at the same time. So yeah, yeah, I, yeah, so yeah, don't know, just headache, headache all over the place. And then the last one, this is my favourite one, um, and some of you will get this reference. I am a chemistry teacher and I can honestly, honestly say that my favourite scientist is Heisenberg. Um, so Heisenberg's uncertainty principle says that you can know either the speed of an electron or its location, but you can never know both at the same time. So if you know how fast an electron is going, you cannot know where it is. And if you know where it is, you cannot know how fast it's going. You can't know both things at the same time. It is completely impossible. And again, how can you know one thing without knowing the other thing? This is the completely mind-blowing thing. That when I sat my A-level class down at the beginning of the uh, beginning of year twelve, and they told them this, they just just looked at me like I'd made them cry. Um, yeah, the electrons, they, they are, if you understand electrons, then we just need to call the Nobel Prize Committee straight away because electrons are amazing, amazing things. And electrons are the reason that I really, really love chemistry because they are responsible for so many cool things. They are responsible for um, the cool reactions that we see. They are responsible for life on Earth. They are responsible for, for absolutely everything. So... I'm going to try and get as many people as I can to tell you why um, they think chemistry is so cool, why they love chemistry. And I hope that by watching these videos, you become a little bit more enthusiastic about chemistry, a little bit inspired to find out something, um, something new to follow something up, and then hopefully to um, follow chemistry up, not only to A-level to degree, but just, just go and study electrons and get that Nobel Prize.